chance for the women to get back on the uh, winning track. Lander always a tough place to play. And yeah. playing on the road, as we've talked about all season long in the Peach Belt, you give it your best shot and hope you can come out on top. You're not going to win them all. Nope. You're not going to win them all on the road, especially when you're getting everybody's best punch. Um, you are the defending South Region runner-up, uh, Southeast Region runner-up. You are picked first in the league. You're atop the league standings or right near it. Uh, you're going to get everybody's best punch, especially at home. Uh, and so um, it's uh, it's it's um, you're not going to win them all. Right. So um, it's just a byproduct of uh, a, a, of a long season, and I think it's just a matter of time before we come out here and uh, heat things up. The nice thing about it is, with the way the schedule worked out this particular season, the vast majority of the road games are now behind yeah. the Nighthawks, and they can look forward to finishing with the vast majority of their games at home. Yeah, it's um, ebb and flow is a basketball schedule. Uh, the conference schedule, you can't control. It just kind of happens when it comes from the league office. And you've got to manage, you've got to manage, their, every team's going to have the uh, four games in a week once, uh, and then every team's going to have that stretch of road games where you just have to, uh, you just have to wear it. And um, the, the old adage in college basketball is take care of home court, win the games you're supposed to win, and steal a couple on the road. The opponent today, Georgia Southwestern, holds the distinction of being the first opponent to play North Georgia here in the convocation last year. Yep. And boy, what a game that was. The women hitting triple digits in the victory, 105 to 52. So Georgia Southwestern becomes the first team to be here twice. Yeah, this is eerily similar, to be honest with you, to February uh, of 2000 of last year. Um, Corps of Cadets in the stands, uh, a lot of pageantry going on. Uh, but at the end of the day here in about a minute and 15 seconds, we'll be able to put all that aside us and it'll just be what happens in the 94 feet out there in front of the table. You look at the Nighthawks, they are tied for second, just a game and a half behind Lander. Uh, North Georgia with nine and three, their conference mark. Georgia Southwestern, five and seven. But uh, again, the danger of looking at just that number or that set of numbers and even thinking about overlooking the Hurricanes, not a good idea. No, um, especially again, uh, you when you're on the road, you can play hungry. You're not supposed to win. Um, the, the, um, the glam of this building has passed for the Hurricanes. So um, I really expect a hard day. And they saw that uh, vulnerability of us not shooting the ball well Wednesday night. So I really expect a, uh, a first-class effort from Georgia Southwestern today. Good question. Important game for both teams with, with the Nighthawks looking to get things back in gear and climb back into first place in the Peach Belt Conference. So glad that you joined us here today for game number one of our doubleheader. We'll step aside when we come back starting lineups and the opening tip right here on the Nighthawk Sports Network. I'm a commuter. I'm an actor. I'm an intern. I'm a researcher. I am a senior. I'm an athlete. I'm a veteran. I'm a sister. I'm a sophomore. I'm a singer. I am an educator. I am a scientist. I am a resident. I am a writer. I am a leader. I am a cadet. I am a volunteer. I am a musician. I am a tutor. We are UNG. The Monday morning status meeting leaves everyone in a state of boredom. That must be why they called it a boardroom. But you're putting a new spin on this week's meeting. Because you brought bagels. Fresh baked bagels. So, well done, my friend. Not only have you uplifted the vibe of the status meeting, you've upgraded your own status to hero. Save the day with bagels. Now it's even easier. Play and stay in Dahlonega, the heart of the North Georgia mountains.
Leadership is socially responsible, collaborative, and inclusive. It's a process, not a position. The University of North Georgia is a state leadership institution. Here, the leadership certificate program is open to all students who want to enhance their leadership knowledge, gain practical skills, and become a more effective leader. A more effective leader. You can get credit for your involvement in student organizations, campus events, community service, study abroad, and many other campus activities. Start learning how to understand your personal leadership philosophy, be part of a team, improve your communication, create an inclusive environment, and make a difference in your community. Make a commitment to yourself and become part and become part of the leadership certificate program. Because of the University of North Georgia, you can lead. You can lead. You can lead. You can lead. You can lead, you can lead where it counts. guard just off the court here at the convocation center and it never fails the the addition to the atmosphere that the honor guard brings is second to none here at the University of North Georgia time now for the starting lineups in today's matchup between the Nighthawks of UNG and the Hurricanes of Georgia Southwestern. And prior to that, recognition of two members of the North Georgia team who, within the last couple of weeks, surpassed the 1,000 career point threshold. Tamara Thorpe and Amber Schedule. And a wonderful recognition, the honor, and well-deserved recognition. And also recognition of the 500 career win for head coach Buffy Burson. So they will take the picture with both Tamara, Amber, and Coach Burson. And uh, collecting this for posterity with the photos. And uh, a well-deserved round of applause for all three. And the tremendous achievements for all. And what, uh, what a nice presentation to have both the players who had surpassed the 1,000 points for their career and then also being able to honor Coach Burson for her 500th career win that she uh, surpassed earlier this season. Starting lineups now for the Hurricanes under head coach Kelly Britsky in her 12th season at Georgia Southwestern. Number zero, Morgan Towles. Number 10, Madison Johnson. Number 12, Jamisha Samuel. Number 21, Tamikia Blue. And number 33, Tyra Smith. The Hurricanes bring a mark of 8 and 10 overall, 5 and 7 in Peach Belt Conference play. For the Nighthawks of UNG under head coach Buffy Burson, it is a starting five that we have grown accustomed to. The same starting five that has started yeah. every single game this year. Seen it a few times, and uh, it's worked pretty well. So uh, no need to change it. It's always interesting for me in going through the season box score to look at trends with regard to who is leading the team uh -huh. in certain categories. The young lady <laughs> now leads in two categories, both assists and steals. Sophomore Abby Franklin. Yeah, that's that's no surprise there. The unflappable Abby Franklin. Yeah. Um, really, it, it's hard to forget that. I don't know how old she is. She's probably 19, maybe. Um, she's only a sophomore. Right. And so uh, it's just uh, the the more she gets uh, aged, uh, the more she's probably going to become one of the conferences and regions most uh, uh, steady point guards. Well said. Joining Abby in the starting lineup. Tamara Thorpe, number 12, Vanessa Agrusa, number 14, number 20, Amber Schedule, and yeah, number 42, Julianne Sutton. Coach Burson assisted by Jamie Acton, Jordan Tetley, and Mackenzie Dara. They are 14 and 4, 9 and 3 in the Peach Belt Conference. 
Georgia Southwestern in their road uniforms, the home whites for the Nighthawks. So glad that you've joined us here this afternoon on the Nighthawk Sports Network and our flagship station, Glory 1330, 97-9. We are ready for action. Amber schedule on the jump circle and controls the tip easily to Sutton. Over to Vanessa, puts it up, draws contact. And that's an opportunity for a three-point play within the first five seconds of the game. Got her with the uh, a little inside-out hesitation move. Got the defender thinking middle of the lane. Uh, just a great use of her shoulders and head fake. Um, Inside-out, uh, absorbed the contact almost head-to-head -head, uh, and able to finish. Great start for North Georgia. And just like that, Vanessa Grusa makes it 3 nothing, and we've only played six seconds in the opening quarter. This is interesting here, Craig. 1-3-1 uh, one, one is kind of our go-to change of pace defense, but we're showing a 1-3-1 one, one extended all the way out here to half court, right to begin from the start of the game. And it pays dividends. The ball knocked free, but the pass ahead to Agrusa taken away by number 23, well, Perry. Jumper from the right side, no good. Rebound snared by Sutton. Quickly to Thorpe, up ahead, Franklin sees daylight, shoots. Oh boy, just so close to another three-point opportunity. Franklin missing the layup, but did draw contact. And Abby knows there, you can see the disappointment in her face. She knows that that wasn't enough contact to make her miss that shot. She's got to be thinking three points there instead of two. Another great example, though, of the speed, the quickness that she has to accelerate. Yeah. Uh, ability to play in gears, that's what you like your players to do. You always want players playing in fourth gear and to have the ability to go up into fifth when needed, but you never want to play at maximum speed. One out of two for Abby. At the other end, the shot high off the glass and good for Tamisia Blue, and it's four to two, North Georgia. Sutton saves it to Agrusa, now in the hands of Schedule. Played a minute. Five seconds in the opening quarter here in Dahlonega. Thorpe, top of the key to Sutton, looking down low to schedule and set back to Thorpe. Ten on the shot clock. Thorpe, left side of the lane, shots up and good. Georgia Southwestern is one of the few teams that can really match our 2-3-4, our guards length. We like to go high-low a lot with our twos and threes to get that mismatch, but uh, Georgia Southwestern built outside of the point guard and the big five, very similar to us, long and lengthy players on the wing. Blue picks up her dribble, now back to Perry it goes, down low, the pass to Johnson, shot blocked emphatically by Julianne Sutton. And that's what I think Coach Burson wants to see a little bit more of her do, is, our, is as our five, as our big, protect the rim. Uh, there's times where Julianne will choose to take charges. Um, I think if she can just play as a wall and play tall and keep the ball in front of her and, instead of trying to move lateral, laterally, I think that's where she's at best defensively. Her 29th block on the season, which leads the team. A missed shot. Nighthawks are running the floor and converting at the other end. Vanessa Agrusa, and quickly a timeout taken by Kelly Britsky for Georgia Southwestern with 8.02 to go here in the opening quarter, and that becomes a media. We'll take it. It's 8-2 to two, North Georgia on the Nighthawk Sports Network. At Farmers, we've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything, even close claws. We took your shortcut. Yeah. It's a bad idea. I can't believe that worked. No, 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 I got no. the keys. And we covered it. Talk to farmers. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. The UNG Campus Connection is your university bookstore. It's the one-stop shop where students can get anything they need for the classroom, and fans can find everything they need to support the Nighthawks, from shirts and jackets to car decals and tailgating chairs. Gear up at the Nighthawks Nest with officially licensed UNG merchandise. Visit our stores in Dahlonega, Gainesville, Oconee, and Cumming, or check us out online at ungbookstore.com. The UNG Campus Connection is a proud sponsor of North Georgia Athletics. Back to action we are, and the shot clock did not engage, and so we will reset 
The norm, I think, is a warning horn or a notification. And then the uh, a second horn, but only one sounded. So they'll knock off about four ticks. Yeah, those, are, those could end up being important ticks. You yeah. never know. You never know. There are games where each, each tick is important. Yes, sir. So the Hurricanes with the ball, and again, that reset back to 30, so an inadvertent shot clock. Adjustment being made here again. And to your point with regard to the defense that uh, Coach Burson is starting with, not only is it that they go to change of pace defense, it's an aggressive version yeah. of that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, you normally see it about a step or so on top of the three point line, but we've got it all the way out to the top of the key at this bar, excuse me, to the timeline. Right. Uh, and the goal with an extended 1 3 1 defense is to make the defense. Uh, throw long and arcing passes, not penetrating passes to the paint. You saw that on the last possession down the floor for Georgia Southwestern. So they are going to do a little uh, work here. We'll keep it right here for the moment on the uh, clock. And so we will um, allow him to do that. A lot going on this weekend in addition to the induction of the new members for the Hall of Fame. You've got uh, teams in action for the spring sports. Baseball with a nice start to things. Yeah, four and, and two, four and two, four to two winners down at uh, Florida Tech yesterday. Softball with a split. I think both teams are probably getting pretty close to first pitches here this afternoon. Baseball another single, and softball is actually going to play three games down in uh, Mobile. That's a big day. Yeah, big day for softball. And how great to see young. Mr. McCrary on the mound. That's a great story for a lot of reasons. Uh, two years removed from being an all-region pitcher, um, dealing with, uh, you know, unfortunate circumstances of life, uh, has since been uh, married. Uh, it's, it's just his, his life has just taken a turn, um, a, a unique turn, uh, but there's a, been a plan there that has been executed, and uh, it was great to see him back, actually, uh, to a point to where he was able to get the win. Right. So the work is continuing on the uh, electronics across the way. And I'm trying to recall my memory, they're showing 7.14 as the time remaining in the quarter. I think they're going through uh, just some uh, adjustment. Yeah. So that will continue. Until they get that all worked. And that's the one thing we take for granted so many times is that technology will work flawlessly each and every time, and that's just not the nature of the beast. Uh, and it tends to choose to uh, it tends to pick and choose the dates that uh, there's a, everybody's pulled in a bunch of different directions. To, uh, that problem. Big days like today require um, full attention of uh, the department's problem solvers, right. and uh, everybody is pulled in a different direction. But it looks like those problem solvers have been able to execute this correction and uh, almost have us ready to get back to action here. Well, and a great opportunity to throw out kudos to your team, Lee. Uh, phenomenal chemistry. You know, it's, it's interesting for me looking at all the, the moving parts and pieces to your staff and just so impressive what you've done in assembling that team. It's no, there, there's no you in that. Uh, that I, I work with really, really good people that are talented and uh, it, it, it's unique to find talented people that will go above and beyond at the call. Well, a lot of times talented people are just, uh, just good, but uh, we have a group of talented people that want to do more than they're asked to do. And it shows. Basket down low. Tyra Smith makes it eight to four. For Georgia the lead and the ball. Franklin right side on the wing to Thorpe. She skips it over to Skidgel. Amber launches a three and hits it. Back in our 1-3-1 one, one again, extended to half court. And look at our length. You've got Thorpe, Agrusa, Skidgel, and um, and Sutton, that's just a lot of length to get around. A steal, the basket, and one. Thorpe 
seeing that she had a step on the defender after making the steal. Makes it 13 to four. If I'm coaching Georgia Southern, in private, I'm saying, ladies, we either need to stop fouling the basketball on dribble penetration or foul a lot harder. Right. But uh, that, that, this could be, this is a potential third plus one, and charges plus ones and shot blocks. Those are the things that are kind of game emotion changing. And in the first three and three minutes and 10 seconds, uh, Georgia Southwestern has given us three of those. 650 and counting. Heads up. Good, good warning there. Uh, uh, your head's on a swivel, I knew you had it. <laughs> 10 point lead, down low, the shot altered and a foul call, that will send Maria Trimble to the line for two shots. Also going back prior to the steal and the three point play by Thorpe. The three from Skidgel on the left wing, defender was within reach of her. Amber didn't hesitate a bit to just go over yeah, the top. Yeah, and you're talking about a six foot shooter. And that's back to our advantage with our twos, threes, and fours. You got Abby at point, and you've got Julianne at the five, but we're bigger than probably every other team in the nation in between the, those two. Two foul shots for Trimble, make it 14-6, and a turnover gives it right back to the Hurricanes. Lex Chapman on the floor now for Georgia Southwestern. Also, Morgan Trout puts it up from the left elbow, no good, rebound to Agrusa. Vanessa gets it over to Thorpe, drives into the lane. And you know, I think that might have been uh, an optical illusion. I think yeah. she actually held her pivot. It was. Foot. It was just awkward. Yeah. It was a delayed extra pivot step. Skip over the defense to trial or towels rather. Now the shot from 10 feet will not go for Chris Beckham, but gets her own rebound and follows it up. Franklin works up against towels. Now to schedule. Amber, defended by Chapman, works to the right side, leaves it for Thorpe. Tamara down low to Vanessa, puts it up, would not go. Rebound out of nowhere to Sutton. Finds her teammate, Agrusa, no good, tip, and right to Georgia Southwestern. Nice poise by Julianne by running in there, creating that offensive rebound, but not just throwing it. She, she got her balance and, and made a great pass to Vanessa. Strong move on the right block from Maria Trimble. And it's back to a four-point game. A little 6-0 run here by the Hurricanes. 5.15 to go, quarter number one. Sutton well out on the right side. Now away to Agrusa. Vanessa to Thorpe. Lobs it to Sutton in the paint. Shot is up and good. That's great. I think that's Julianne Sutton's first shot of the game. Uh, bigs and shooters, you always like to see the first one go with them. Three-point effort, no good, way short for Chapman. It was out of bounds, last touched by the Hurricanes. And Amani Arnold in. Over the last two weeks, Amani Arnold has been giving us great minutes off the bench. And you're seeing those minutes increase as well, now averaging about 20 minutes a game. Yeah. Schedule on the left wing, lobs it down low to Arnold, Amani turns. Hands it to Skidgel off the glass for two. What great recognition by Imani to see that there was nothing there for her. But found her teammate. There's always a spot in the lineup minute-wise for players that play at a high pace. And Imani Arnold is one of those. Skip pass over to Skidgel on the right side, down low. Arnold leaves it for Sutton, one dribble. The shot is up, draws contact, and a foul. The shot did not go. By the way, the basket at the other end by Blue was pretty amazing. Yeah, that was uh, acrobatic. Acrobatic indeed. Sutton will go to the line where she's hitting 64% on the season. Kia Cochran in the lineup now for the Hurricanes. Julianne puts that one through. She'll have one more with 4.11 to go here in quarter number one. Left that one short. Rebound snared by Trimble, and the Hurricanes down by seven with the ball. 
4.04 to play, quarter number one. Cochran drives, puts up the left-handed shot, no good, tipped. Mm. And it'll be Sutton that comes up with it. Up ahead to Thorpe, off the glass, no good, and a rebound to Georgia Southwestern. Clock rolls, 3.40 to play, quarter number one. Cochran well out on the wing, now backs up, calls a new play. Drives to the paint, kicks it back to Beckham for three, no good, long rebound, and allowed to go out of bounds to North Georgia. And that will bring in number 12, Jamisha Samuel for Georgia Southwestern. Freshman from Valdosta, prepped at Lowndes County. Well, if you're from Valdosta, there's only, well, there, I guess there's three. You can go Lowndes County, you can go Valdosta High, or you can go Valwood Academy. Oh, a beautiful feed and a beautiful shot on the finish there by Sutton. Or Valwood uh, a, or School, I think it's called. 21-12. North Georgia on top. Inside three minutes to play in the first. Chapman. Kicks back to Samuel, and a loose ball. Cochran now with five on the shot clock, tracks it down, drives the left side of the lane. The feed, Trimble, no good. Rebound, Franklin. Here come the Nighthawks quickly ahead. Franklin, bounce pass, Thorpe. That goes out of bounds, and quite honestly, there was more contact on that defensive effort than on any of the other three that resulted in foul shot opportunities. That's that extra pace that Abby Franklin can get into where she just takes the joystick from fourth to fifth and um, uh, agree that's probably a uh, and one situation there. Arnold hands it to Thorpe, down the lane, shot is up, no good. And a rebound to Georgia Southwestern's Chris Beckham. 17 footer will go for Lex Chapman. Franklin across midcourt, 2.15 to go in the first. Agrusa now to Amani in the key. Oh, nice feed to Agrusa. Defender dropped. Franklin in traffic, scores. Looks like we overpassed twice there. We could have scored on two passes prior to that, so it's good to come away <laughs> on the plus side of that possession. That's where the, that's where the coach says, shoot the ball. 148 and counting. Opening quarter in Dahlonega. The pass too much for Kia Cochran to hold on to. Kia, a 5-2 sophomore from Shreveport, Louisiana. Gave it her best effort, but just a little too much. Turnover to North Georgia. And we've transitioned out of the 1-3-1 back into, or, or into a man-to-man. -man. Uh, so it's interesting to see uh, if and when Georgia Southwestern makes adjustments or if we can keep them on their heels by switching in and out of defenses. Kara Groover on the floor now for Coach Burson. Arnold feeds schedule down low, shot off the glass, no good. Gets her own rebound, battles for it out of bounds, and it will stay. Wow, well, that's lucky North there. Georgia. Should have been a foul in North Georgia. I'll tell you, Lex Chapman went to the floor, yeah. courtesy of not one but two yeah. North Georgia Nighthawks battling for that rebound. Loose ball effort, though, but uh, definitely infraction by the Nighthawks there. Groover lobs it into Thorpe. Now to schedule. Amber drives, baseline jumper, no good. Rebound on the weak side to Madison Johnson. Here come the Hurricanes. It's Lex Chapman in the lane, blocked by Arnold and schedule, and a jump ball between Tyra Smith and schedule and the, the alternating possession. It will stay with the Hurricanes. Lob comes in to Chapman. Hands it to Adrian Brown. Don't check that. Tamisha Blue. Floater in the lane will go for Madison Johnson. A nice shot there by Johnson. Great use of uh, explosion dribble. It's and then shot, shot the floater off of her offhand. That's a tough shot from that far away from the basket. 23 to 16. 45 seconds remaining here in quarter number one. Groover out top, leaves it for Thorpe. Now 10 to shoot. Thorpe, right side of the lane, off balance, no good. Rebound, Amani Arnold is fouled. Georgia 
money. Hitting 57% this season. Made that one and made it look easy. She hasn't come out of the game since subbing in uh, at over the five minute mark, has she? You are correct. Yeah. Second one also right on the money. 25 16. 30 seconds to go here in the first. Blue with the ball, double team. Dribbles through it, down the lane, Euro step. And a whistle sends her to the line. Another action today around the Peach Belt. Landers at Augusta. Flagler at UNC Pembroke. Young Harris at Aiken. As Blue hits the first. Georgia College at Francis Marion and Clayton State is at Columbus State. One of the easiest road trips of the league. And no good from Blue. And it's 25-17. Nighthawks can take the last shot here if they so choose. Thorpe holding high now away to schedule. 10, 9, 8, schedule. Bounce pass down low, Thorpe with three seconds, beautifully done. Great little quick pocket pass by Schedule there, fit that through a tight space. Uh, great job by the, uh, the senior guard. That equals the largest lead of the day, 10 points. Nighthawks 27, Hurricane 17. Back to the second quarter in just a moment on the Nighthawk Sports Network. Everything in your hands, nothing in your way. A new and better way to manage and control all your money. You, exclusively by BB&T. We actually do just about anything that you ask. We offer everything from design and branding all the way up to signs and banners, promotional products, digital signage, um, t-shirts, embroidery. Cups, cozies, pans, magnets, there's 25,000 items out there we can do. A lot of people don't know that we can handle all that and we can look at the customer and say, yeah, we do that. Teams are coming back on the floor. First quarter was a good one for the Nighthawks. Got out of the gates well, aggressive defensively and Doing what was necessary on their end of the floor. They lead by 10, and Franklin inbounds to Agrusa, and we're back to action. Second quarter, and on the floor, number 10, Lydia Skinner. Thorpe away to Skinner, now Agrusa on the wing, back to Franklin. Vanessa, one dribble, now looked inside, instead puts it up and hits. That gets it going just inside the arc. 29 to 17. Biggest lead of the day for the Nighthawks. Skip pass and contacts by Skinner will result in a foul. By the way, the officials here this afternoon, Anthony Jefferson, Phyllis Roberts, and Kiki Tardy. Never late. Ever. Had a chance to chat briefly with both Kiki and Phyllis prior to the game. They were looking forward to being here today. Oh, another block. That's the 30th of the season for Sutton. Goes and the, the effort. And the effort to chase it and pursue it. Unbelievable uh, effort. Arrow is going to stay in possession of Georgia Southwestern, but again, more of what you want to see a traditional big doing. Back to the basket, playing tall, and then first effort to the floor. That's, that's really what we've been yearning for in Julianne. Yet another multi-block effort. A minute into quarter number two, shot will go for Blue, and it's 29-19. 
In the lane, the shot up and good by Skinner. Nice use of the left by Skinner, but more importantly, a great pitch ahead by Abby Franklin just to kind of keep the numbers at our advantage. Livia, freshman from Rome, Georgia. Long three left side off the iron, no good. Rebound Skinner, here come the Nighthawks. Livia works to the top of the key, stops away to Agrusa. One dribble and the pass to Franklin. In the paint, Sutton draws contact, puts it up, and gets the roll. That's good. I'm not sure if she's two for two from the field, but um, it's good to see them going at a high rate for her. Oh, 31st block of the season for Sutton. Heading the other way in a hurry. Pass intended for Thorpe, tipped away. Let's pause 10 seconds for Station ID. This is the Nighthawk Sports Network. Back to action. Schedule drives into the lane, turns, hook shot up, would not go. Rebound Sutton, the follow, and one. Another great decision defensively on the other end by Julianne playing behind instead of, the, that was the first one where she's had the opportunity to either just wall up tall or take the charge. Did a good job of uh, taking the, uh, or, or just be playing as a natural big. Sutton settles in at the line looking for her 10th point of the day. And that one not forthcoming. She'll have to wait for the next opportunity. Biggest lead of the day now, 16 points. 35-19, clock rolls, 7-38 and counting. In quarter number two. Around to Chapman. Now in the hands of Towels, Morgan shoots, no good. Rebound to Skinner. Outlet comes to Agrusa, up ahead, Sutton! And there you go. Let's take a timeout. 7.17 to go until the half. 37.15. G. This is the Fox Sports Network. Stay in Dahlonega, the heart of the North Georgia mountains. The Nighthawks of UNG on a 12-2 run. An 8-0 push has made it now an 18-point advantage. Craig Corbin, Lee Glenn, the Nighthawks Sports Network team. And I think the Nighthawks are beginning to hit full stride here this afternoon. When was the last time you saw a coach person coach team not, not lose back-to-back, -back, but not give their best effort on back-to-back -back nights. Couldn't, it's been a long, long Doesn't time. happen. It's like, unfortunately, Georgia Southwestern happened to be the team yeah. that was in the way after a uh, bad shooting uh, night Wednesday in Greenwood. Sutton to Agrusa on the left side. Hands it to Skinner. Livia drives to the paint, stops. Now needs help. Gets it from Vanessa. Ten to shoot now. Eight. Seven, Agrusa, beautiful left-handed shot, would not go. I like it. At the other end, the Hurricanes on the move. Shot no good, the follow would not go for Chapman. And here come the Nighthawks. Franklin, the lob to schedule, a shot would not go. Thought she got fouled. I know she did. Up ahead go the Hurricanes to Lex Chapman. Out front it goes now to Brianna Perry. 
Morgan Towles guarded by Franklin. A long three, in and out, no good. Offensive rebound and the basket. And give that one to Kiara York. 37-23. 5.45 to go until my half. York on the baseline. Now way to Perry. Brianna back out to Lex Chapman. Chapman guarded by Skinner. Launches it just inside the arc. Mm. No good. Rebound to Amber Skidgel. Show was a little rocky. Yeah, it was. Amber will hand it away to Franklin. Top of the key, Sutton. Down low, open, and Vanessa Agrusa. Not going to miss that bunny. Uncontested bunnies. 39-23. 5.09 to go, second quarter. Hurricanes with the ball. Perry drives, guarded by Agrusa in the corner. It goes now back to Chapman in the lane. The lob tipped away. Loose ball, scramble, mm. and the Hurricanes keep it. Chapman doesn't, oh, she does get it to go. I thought it was going to rim out. It's actually, who was first to the floor there, Craig? Southwestern. They were. Yeah, good things happen when That's, you're first to the floor. That really holds true the vast majority of the time. Mm -hmm. Powell's from the foul line, good. And a couple of quick baskets and a timeout. Coach Burson is not happy about something, and she is letting uh, Anthony Jefferson know about it in no uncertain terms. We will step aside briefly. 4.30 to go here in the second. 39-27 North Georgia on the Nighthawk Sports Network. And back to action, the Nighthawks with the ball. Amani Arnold in the key, looking down low, and a foul inside. A foul inside. Away from the ball. Stops the clock, 4.20 to go here in the second. Inbound comes to schedule on the left side, back out front to Groover. Kara works. To the right side. Picks up her dribble. Now down low, intended for Arnold. Knocked away and a foul on the play. And that will go against Chris Beckham, the senior from Zebulon, Georgia. Groover on the baseline. And lobs it in. Schedule and a beautiful inbound play, resulting in an easy layup for Schedule. 42, 27, 41, beg your pardon, 27. 350 to go, missed shot, rebound schedule, out it comes to Thorpe. Camera up ahead to Franklin, now a long three off the iron from schedule, no good, rebounded by Kara Groover. All like away and out of bounds. It will stay with North Georgia. Schedule inbound directly in front of the broadcast position here courtside. Does so. Play is resumed. Franklin now looks 
to the right. Passes top of the key. Arnold over on the left wing to Thorpe. Now in the hands of Groover. Kara from the left elbow. Might have been partially altered there. Hurricanes with the ball down 41-27 with 3.16 to go in the second. York picks up her dribble. Ball knocked away by Franklin. Right to Amani Arnold. They've got numbers. Amani bounce pass Thorpe. Right back to Arnold, but knocked away. That was a beautiful tandem effort with Amani Arnold and Tamara Thorpe. Overpass there again, I think, Craig. Yeah, probably. Thorpe, foul line shot, no good. And a rebound of the Hurricanes. Quickly the other way goes Tamisia Blue. Pass in the corner to Samuel. Shot blocked by Schedule. Goes out of bounds and over to North Georgia. And quick substitution coming in, Kia Cochran. Schedule. No way to Franklin. Now Franklin on the right side. Guarded by Perry. Away it goes to Thorpe. Shot clock at 15. Camera had it intercepted by Perry. Hurricanes have it. Down 41-27. 2.14 to go, second quarter. Perry drives, shoots. No good. Rebound to Kara Groover. Groover brings it up across half court. In the lane, the pass to Schedule. Shot, no good. Rebound, Groover. Care, oh, the pass intended for a Monty Arnold track down by Franklin. Abby with the ball. Way to Groover. Beautiful pass to a Monty Arnold who missed the open shot. What a pass from Kara Groover. Oh, my goodness. Blocked by Schedule. Out of bounds. Those are 95% of Amber Schedule's blocks come from behind like that. Mass substitution by Coach Burson. Sutton, Agrusa, Skinner, and who else is out there? Faith Arthur. Yep, first minutes for her. Yep. Well, back to that pass at the other end from Groover. Hate that. A great IQ. Oh, my goodness. Just on a rail. Three-pointer at the other end will go for Lex Chapman. Tip of the hat to Southwestern here. Could have rolled over down 16 or 17 earlier and got this thing down to... Back to 11. Nearly 11, yep. 41 to 30, your score. 115 to go in the second. Left-handed shot goes for Faith Arthur. Nice soft touch by Faith there. Ball hit the front of the rim before it went in. That's hard to do. A minute to play until the half. At the left elbow, Trimble away to Cochran. Back to Trimble, down the lane, full head of steam, lost it out of bounds to North Georgia. Hmm. Thought we touched that. We did. Okay. You did not see incorrectly. That's all right. 45 seconds and counting here in the second. Schedule, well out on the wing, skips it over to Sutton, holding high. Now we'll hand it to Amber, takes the three, shots up, good. That's just a set call there by North Georgia. High post handoff, run a couple cutters off of it, and then uh, it's just human nature to go underneath that handoff, and if you go underneath the handoff to Amber's schedule, that's an automatic three-point attempt. Final 15 seconds of the second quarter. Cochran on the left wing, guarded by Agrusa. Out top it goes, ball kicks free. Five seconds, Nighthawks, oh, and a steal by Chapman. Floater in the lane, no good, and that will do it. It looked as though that Whew. North Georgia was going to have yet another shot before the half. Yeah, that was a good, uh, just nice job to pitch it ahead, but Amber didn't see it, so uh, that's okay. We'll take that 16-point lead into the halftime. Without question, 46 to 30. In favor of North Georgia. Stay with us, Mac, right here on the Nighthawk Sports Network.
All right, I gotta work on some of this. Man. Leadership is socially responsible, collaborative, and inclusive. It's a process, not a position. The University of North Georgia is a state leadership institution. Here, the leadership certificate program is open to all students who want to enhance their leadership knowledge, gain practical skills, and become a more effective leader. A more effective leader. You can get credit for your involvement in student organizations, campus events, community service, study abroad, and many other campus activities. Start learning how to understand your personal leadership philosophy, be part of a team, improve your communication, create an inclusive environment, and make a difference in your community. Make a commitment to yourself and become part and become part of the leadership certificate program. Because of the University of North Georgia, you can lead. You can lead. You can lead. You can lead. You can lead, you can lead where it counts. Monday morning status meeting leaves everyone in a state of boredom. That must be why they called it a boardroom. But you're putting a new spin on this week's meeting. Because you brought bagels. Fresh baked bagels. So, well done, my friend. Not only have you uplifted the vibe of the status meeting, you've upgraded your own status to hero. Save the day with bagels. Now it's even easier. We actually do just about anything that you ask. We offer everything from design and branding all the way up to signs and banners, promotional products, digital signage, um, t-shirts, embroidery. Cups, cozies, pans, magnets. There's 25,000 items out there we can do. A lot of people don't know that we can handle all that and we can look at the customer and say, yeah, we do that. Welcome back here on Hall of Fame Day, induction ceremony day, homecoming, and pageantry that goes along with all of that. Greg Corbin, the Nighthawk Sports Network team here. And a gorgeous winter afternoon. Peach Belt Conference doubleheader between North Georgia and Georgia Southwestern. And what was uh, a cold shooting game the last time out for North Georgia. Well, that's been turned around. Red hot from the floor, 19 of 35 in the first half, 54% beyond the arc, two of three. Both those belong to Amber Schedule. She has 10 points in the first half. Six of nine at the line for the Nighthawks. Julianne Sutton leads the way offensively with 11 points. Nine in the first half for Vanessa Agrusa. Seven points for Tamara Thorpe. Three points for Abby Franklin and two each for the trio of Amani Arnold, Olivia Skinner, and Faith Arthur. And a effort on the boards, dead even. 22 rebounds apiece from both teams here in the first half of play. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll dive a little bit deeper into the box score. Your score at the half, North Georgia 46, Georgia Southwestern 30. This is the Nighthawk Sports Network. What is the Golden Eagle Band? Established in 1873, we are the oldest organization on campus. Excellence in music is our passion. Our spirit of brotherhood provides friendships that last a lifetime. We 
compete and perform just for fun. Join the tradition. I'm a commuter. I'm an actor. I'm an intern. I'm a researcher. I am a senior. I'm an athlete. I'm a veteran. I'm a sister. I'm a sophomore. I'm a singer. I am an educator. I am a scientist. I am a resident. I am a writer. I am a leader. I am a cadet. I am a volunteer. I am a musician. I am a tutor. We are UNG. Farmers, we've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything, even close claws. We took your shortcut. Yeah. It's a bad idea. I can't believe that worked. No, 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 I got no. the keys. And we covered it. Talk to farmers. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Back again here at the half. It is the Nighthawks of UNG with a 16 point advantage over Georgia Southwestern. The Nighthawks looking for their 15th win of the season. Their 10th conference win of the year. Today's game, the 32nd meeting between these two programs. North Georgia with a 22 to 9 advantage in that series. And of course, back to last year, the first game ever played in the Convocation Center. A resounding win by North Georgia over Georgia Southwestern. 105 to 52. Here in the first half for the Hurricanes, no one in double figures, two players with seven points apiece, Lex Chapman and Tamisia Blue. And then four points for Maria Trimble, a host of others with two points each. Chris Beckham, Kiara York, Brianna Perry, Madison Johnson, Morgan Towles and Tyra Smith collectively. The Hurricanes shot 35 percent on 13 of 37. One of five beyond the arc and three of four at the foul line. As far as uh, turnovers, each team with six in the first half. The Hurricanes made five steals. Nighthawks had four in the first half. Block shots, five in the first half for North Georgia. Three from Julianne Sutton and two by Amber Schedule. The best scoring run for either team in the first half of play. There was an 8-0 run by North Georgia. And a nice visual there. The Hall of Fame inductees and all the members of the Hall of Fame here at the University of North Georgia at center court here and a great round of applause for the newest members of the Hall of Fame. We'll step aside, be back for more at the half. This is the Nighthawk Sports Network.
have it. Everything in your hands, nothing in your way. A new and better way to manage and control all your money. You, exclusively by bb and The UNG Campus Connection is your university bookstore. It's the one-stop shop where students can get anything they need for the classroom, and fans can find everything they need to support the Nighthawks, from shirts and jackets to car decals and tailgating chairs. Gear up at the Nighthawks Nest with officially licensed UNG merchandise. Visit our stores in Dahlonega, Gainesville, Oconee, and Cumming, or check us out online at ungbookstore.com. The UNG Campus Connection is a proud sponsor of North Georgia Athletics. And back we are here courtside, the Convocation Center, Greg Corbin, Lee Glenn, the Nighthawk Sports Network team, and a great first half in this women's game. Uh, we saw them very aggressively from a defensive standpoint, and the offense wasn't bad either. No, the offense, uh, our, our, a lot of our offense was generated by a, uh, a little bit of a wrinkle, showing an extended 1-3-1 really early in the game like that, um, and I think that got Georgia South through a, a monkey wrench in Georgia Southwestern's plan, created a, a couple quick turnovers that led to transition baskets, which uh, I think we had a three and ones in our first five or six possessions. That kind of set the tone for the game that we were going to play fast. Uh, 46 points is a lot for us and a half on pace for uh, dang near 100 points. So um, as we mentioned uh, midway through the first half, uh, it's been a long time since we've seen a team like this play not A-plus basketball on back-to-back -back nights. So um, unfortunately, it just happened to be the Hurricanes that were in the way tonight. But, but I will tell you, though, that um, they did a great job of responding to, to Georgia Southwestern. So um, uh, it, obviously 16 points to a team that plays fast is nothing. So it's going to be interesting to see if we come back and, and just lean on what North Georgia basketball is. A lot of high-low in the offense, mixing up defenses, uh, mixing in a three or so, but really getting post touches, whether it begins with Julie Ann Sutton or if, in a, if it's in a mismatch situation with our larger wings. We talked about the positives from the first half. There were a couple of occasions where I think we noted there might have been an extra pass or two yep. in a possession. If you're going to have a problem, I guess that's a good one to have. Better than the alternative right. of uh, the next pass, right. next play, next game, next possession. But really, uh, one more is the theme that you see in basketball, almost like a hockey assist. So if you can make that assist when you receive a pass, without dribbling it. So if it comes to your hands to a scored basket, those are kind of the best kind. And I think that there were two or three possessions in the first half where we tried too hard just to, instead of just trying to score quick. But as you noted, if there were, if, if I had to judge which one I wanted to correct, it would absolutely be being over generous than being too quick triggered. What's nice is looking at that shooting percentage of 54% in the first uh, half of this ball game. And obviously that gets you out of the mindset. Whatever was left over from yeah. the last time out, boom, that's done. That's gone. Yeah, and like, uh, what, what did you say we're shooting from three, Craig? I just missed that. Well, beyond the arc. Just two or three. Yeah, two or three. And so, you know, parameter. in a game where we needed to make a few more threes Wednesday night just to kind of uh, establish our identity and open up that paint and, and depressurize Lander's uh, you know, but, but that's behind us. You know, I, I think that what is going to come and go is our shot efficiency. There are nights where we're not going to shoot it well. Um, statistically thinking, Amber Schedule uh, and Abby Franklin, to a little bit of a degree, are high, high percentage shooters. Um, the nights that they don't shoot it well, it puts a lot of stress on shooters that are not necessarily statistical um, high, high efficiency three point shooters. So, um, uh, you know, shots come and go. Defense is something that has to travel every night, right. and it absolutely arrived in the Convocation Center today. Without question. It's always uh, intriguing when you try to imagine what was touched on at halftime of a ball game. You know, when, when a team doesn't perform well, you sort of have an idea what might be yeah. talked about. When you're hitting on all cylinders just about, eh, you've got a little less pressure perhaps at the break. Maybe, but I'll tell you that a co coaches are perfectionists. Right. And uh, one thing that I can promise was talked about at halftime is the fact that there were two or three occasions where Georgia Southwestern was first to the floor and won a lot of loose balls. Um, there was a great, great job by um, 
by Julianne Sutton on one occasion where she blocked a shot and went to the floor, didn't come up with it. But um, Georgia Southwestern is, is here to compete. Uh, they've, they haven't executed uh, crossing T's and dotting I's as efficiently as they'd wanted to. But I'll tell you what, one thing that I will guarantee that has been employed by the Nighthawks here in the second half is their ability to compete a little bit harder on loose balls. And the third quarter is underway. Nighthawks have possession. Sutton out on the perimeter to Agrusa. Thorpe now lobs down low over the top, intended for Sutton. Winds up with schedule. Now Sutton over to Franklin. Her first three of the day, and it's good. Three of four now, 75% from the floor. Uh, you're in trouble. If anybody shoots, regardless of what your win record is or your skill level, if a team shoots above 50% from the floor for a game, you are in trouble. Without question, that's the sort of thing that uh, sort of becomes a proliferation of riches. Yeah. Georgia Southwestern with the ball in the corner. Blue now drives baseline. Oh, goodness, a circus shot did not go, but they come up with the loose ball. And underneath, basket to Tyra Smith. Loose ball, won by Georgia Southwestern. Good things happen for the Hurricanes. And then we, after giving marginal effort on the 50-50 ball, had a tough time resetting back into uh, our, our defense. Thorpe on the right side. Sit over to Agrusa on the wing. Back to Thorpe. Now nine to shoot. Rock roll, six, five, Thorpe. In the lane, and it's no good. Tip back up by Agrusa, would not go. I think Vanessa had time to come down with that ball and go back up. It was an extremely athletic effort. Just didn't finish it up. Three-pointer good for Morgan Towles, and 49 to 35. And a takeaway intended for Sutton. Perry up ahead of Johnson, blocked. By Agrusa. On that post entry, when you want to throw over the top of when a post player is fronted, you can't look at it before you throw it. You've either got to throw it on a little bit more of a rope or you've got to look at it at the last second. We were looking at it too long, giving that help side defender just too much time to get over out of the middle of the paint and intercept that pass. And they did. Blue in the lane. Tried to get it to a team out, out of bounds. That should belong to North Georgia, and it does. Rusa inbounds to Franklin. The clock rolls, 7.50 and counting here in the third. It's always great to see the cadets in the Convocation Center. They are, uh, they are really the thread of this university. Foul away from the ball on Smith. That is the first here in the third quarter. Franklin will inbound. Does so to schedule down low. Sutton collects it and missed the shot. Gets her own rebound, battles for it, puts it up and in, and one. Got away with a good one there because she should have made the first one. Uh, but uh, really tip of the hat there for the effort to stay with it, get the ball back, and then play through. Some minimal contact, but was able to play through it and create Yet another and one situation for North Georgia. Julianne, the leading scorer for the Nighthawks today with 13. And missing on that one. Hurricanes on the move. Towels. Oh, goodness. Wide open on the transition. Tyra Smith, that was a missed assignment defensively. Especially off of a missed free throw. Goodness. Got to know what defense we're in, and we've got to get there quickly. Schedule baseline, no good. Hurricanes with the ball. Perry zips it over to Blue. Goes baseline, reverses. And back around the perimeter they go. Perry away to Towels, long three, no good. Sutton to Thorpe. Good tip out defensively there by Thorpe. Nice pass to Franklin and the reverse layup. Sneaky. Very. 
Six and a half minutes to go here in the third. In the lane. That one rattles out for Madison Johnson. And they whistle inside. And what's this call going to be? Are there conflicting whistles? I think. go against Julian. Agrusa gets a breather. Faith Arthur is back in. Hurricanes will have it along the baseline. Inbound comes to Blue. Tamisia, junior from Atlanta, a transfer from Alabama State. Now on the right side, towels three no good. Rebound to Sutton. Schedule brings it up to the right wing. Down low, Arthur turns. Tried to get it to Julianne, but it was intercepted. Just a connection there that we haven't seen much of. Arthur in the paint, Sutton on the perimeter, trying to get a basket cut. That's just that that that, uh, that connection is something that we haven't seen uh, much this year. They just had a tough time uh, getting on the same page there. The drive by Towels did not result in a basket, but it will give her an opportunity at the foul line. And the season 79% from the charity strike. Puts that one through. 53-38. Second one good as well. 14-point lead. 5.50 to go in the third. Down low. And nicely done, Julianne Sutton. Good job of transitioning, running the floor, running the pipe, it's called. Getting to the nail, turning around, and, and being relevant uh, in transition. It's a tough thing to do for bigs. It's like offensive linemen having to run and block down the field. High post, Johnson away to Morgan Towles. Takes the shot, no good. Rebound, offensive for Kiara York. Now a three from Perry, no good. Thorpe has it. For the Nighthawks on the move up ahead, Faith Arthur. Nice job by Faith Arthur doing the same exact thing, running the floor ahead of transition, turning her head, and being ready for a pitch up. Franklin takes it from Sutton on the move. Three on two for North Georgia. Faith Arthur again. And there might have been a travel there somewhere. I think there was, but you know what? Reward the young lady for the effort on back-to-back -back possessions, gathering a marginal pass and finishing with her back to the basket. Don't look now, but it's a 20-point lead, the largest of the afternoon. Perry takes the skip pass, puts up the shot, and we're going to have a media timeout. 4.35 to go in the third. It's the Nighthawks of UNG 59, the Hurricanes of Georgia Southwestern 39. This is the Nighthawk Sports Network. Now you have it, everything in your hands nothing in your way. A new and better way to manage and control all your money. You, exclusively by bb &T. The UNG Campus Connection is your university bookstore. It's the one-stop shop where students can get anything they need for the classroom, and fans can find everything they need to support the Nighthawks, from shirts and jackets to car decals and tailgating chairs. Gear up at the Nighthawks Nest with officially licensed UNG merchandise. Visit our stores in Dahlonega, Gainesville, Oconee, and Cumming, or check us out online at ungbookstore.com. The UNG Campus Connection is a proud sponsor of North Georgia Athletics. Back we are here courtside, 4.35 to go in the third. Largest lead of the afternoon, 59 to 39. Hurricanes have the ball. Perry takes the inbound pass, heads to the paint. Cross contact, no whistle. Now there's one. And a block. They're going to give that one, I believe, to Faith Arthur. 
and that will send Brianna Perry, junior from Alpharetta. She prepped at Centennial and then started her collegiate career at Moberly Area Community College. Missing on the first, she'll have one more. 56% shooter on the season and spins that one right in. Scheduled drive, shoots, in and out, no good. Amani Arnold, the left-handed follow, wouldn't go, tipped out of bounds and over to Georgia Southwestern. Tell you what, talk about being on all cylinders when our wings and Thorpe, Schedule, and Agrusa, and now Faith Author and, and, and the likes, whenever they finish those tough twos after they get run off the line, I don't know how we're defendable. I agree. Drive will not go for Bulu, but uh, Tamisi will head to the line for a pair of foul shots. Clock stop, 4.04 to go here in the third. Tamisia transferred to Georgia Southwestern from Alabama State. Seventy-two percent from the line on the year. That one no good. Loose ball. Faith Arthur brings it up. Pass away to Thorpe. Canera to Abby Franklin. Back to Thorpe on the wing left side. Schedule. Franklin back to schedule. Top of the key. Picks up her dribble and on the right side to Abby. Seven to shoot, long three by Amber, no good. Rebound, Lex Chapman for Georgia Southwestern. Didn't seem to get her legs underneath that one. Rattled that three in at the other end. Did number 12, Jamisha Samuel. But Samuel sure did. Yep. Nice transition three. Tough thing to do is square up and receive a pitch ahead pass and then turn and get your balance for a three. Monty Arnold with a nice left-handed layup. The Arnold's turning into a grown woman. Yes. Playing defense inside, altered that shot, but an offensive rebound, and the follow will go. And give credit yeah. on that one to Maria Tremble. She would not be denied. Good effort by Tremble. 61-45, 2.50 to go here in the third. Schedule to Amani Arnold at the left elbow. Dribbles down the lane. The lob is intended for Faith Arthur, and that's maybe the one overpass. of those examples. Yep. She might have taken that. 10-footer. She can finish that, too. Wasn't even a tough two, but she can finish that. I think she was sort of surprised that her defender had evaporated. Yeah, evaporated is a nice word. Ghosted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the term ghosted was, in fact, used. That shot no good. Scramble, loose ball, still loose. And picked up by Arnold. One dribbling away to Agrusa. 2.22 to go in the third. 61-45. Down to Sutton. Would not go. Gets her own rebound. Puts it up. No good. Fouled on the play. Yeah, that last scramble was sort of like many times refer to a rugby scrum but it uh, got kicked free. Julianne left that one short. She'll have one more. Groover back on the floor, as is Livia Skinner. Second one will go for Julianne. 62 to 45. 16 points now for Julianne on the afternoon. Shot will wow. go. Boy, that's a tough, tough shot tough angle. for Jamisha yeah. and Samuel. Inside two minutes here in the third. Arnold down low. Sutton. That's right down Main Street. That's that's a, that's what she was expecting earlier the last time she threw it out. Um, Julianne Sutton did a good job of getting in open space. 64-47. Little nine-footer would not go. Agrusa over to Groover. 
Kara back to Vanessa in the lane. Arnold works the left side, contact, and a foul on Tremble. And I think Maria probably getting frustrated at how easily yeah. Amani is driving right around her. She's left back there in the back side of that zone defense to guard two players after that high post entry pass. She's a defender. She's the last level of defense that's left to guard two and not working out too well for them the last couple possessions. Amani puts it in. No hurricane player, six feet or taller. Amani will have one more. Settles in, and it's good. Maybe the largest number of minutes played in the game all season. They're well learned. They're well learned, yep. though. Only a sophomore. And that's the <laughs> that's the greatest part of that equation. Plays with uh, brings a level of energy just off the bench that's second to none. Set oh. hike, Super Bowl weekend. Indeed, that one saved. Groover up to Grusa, long skip pass Skinner in the left corner. Now she'll skip it back to Vanessa, over to Groover. Down low, Skinner would not go. <laughs> That's a lot of just minutely odd angle twos that we've had right under the basket. Oh, goodness. And a basket at the other end makes it 66 to 49. Final 35 seconds. By the way, Julianne Sutton has earned her fourth double-double of the season. Only her fourth. Amani Arnold in traffic, no good. Rebound, Sutton, the foul, no good, but a foul on the play. We talked about the, the football reference to the set hike at the other end. Yeah. We had sort of a rugby play prior to on the loose ball. So you got the Super Bowl going downtown tomorrow. What is the Super Bowl of rugby? Well, funny you should ask. I'm, that's kind of knew where you were headed. <laughs> <laughs> Did I love that one to the net yeah. for myself? Yeah. Well, yesterday, the Six Nation tournament got underway. France with a pretty easy win over Wales. See, like, I'm glad none of those guys are listening, so they don't <laughs> take any. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some mean dudes. <laughs> I'm telling you, that is one sport. Now, it's funny. I was talking to a gentleman at work who's from Ireland, and he was very much into the the rugby. I said, "Well, there's no protection." He said, "Well, there's sort of like a uh, you know a little protective vest underneath." Sure. England, by the way, knocked off Ireland today, and uh, I think Scotland got a win. But we'll talk more about that okay. in the fourth quarter. It's 67 to 49 in favor of North Georgia. Stay with us. This is the Nighthawk Sports Network. Shop. Play and stay in Dahlonega, the heart of the North Georgia mountains. The Monday morning status meeting leaves everyone in a state of boredom. That must be why they called it a boardroom. But you're putting a new spin on this week's meeting. Because you've brought bagels. Fresh baked bagels. So, well done, my friend. Not only have you uplifted the vibe of the status meeting, you've upgraded your own status to hero. Save the day with bagels. Now it's even easier. You know, we talk about all the presentations and recognitions on this afternoon, and the one that just transpired during that last timeout, perhaps one of the, the most important of the day. Yeah, Dean Himes uh, naming rights to the terrace right here on the north facing side of the Convocation Center. It was announced that uh, those panoramic views will forever now be known, uh, are, are viewed, not the views themselves, but they will be viewed while you're standing on the uh, uh, forever named Dean Himes Terrace. That's awesome. Yeah. Talk about dedication to the university and the amount of time and effort 
man, uh, to, 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 to bring it in full circle of athletics, you know, he volunteered to be the shot uh, clock keeper. Uh, did it for 40 something years, including nearly 20 after he retired. 44 years. Yeah, uh, Colonel, <laughs> Colonel in the Army, Vietnam veteran, dean of students. W what else can the man do? Nice baseline jumper from about 17 feet there for Julianne. And she now has 21 points on the day. Marks the fifth time she's surpassed 20 points in a game. Perry. Oh, nice left. That is very much a nice one. 69 to 51, your score. Franklin to Arthur at the foul line. One dribbling away to schedule. Back to Faith. Oh, beautiful pass to Thor. Wow. Kind of like a little flick pass there. That was a little wraparound yeah. pass. Flick pass off the dribble. 71-51. Clock rolls, 8-25 and counting in the ball game. The pass was intended for Kayla Smith, but it went out of bounds and over to North Georgia. We have credit to Lauren Hunter for uh, snagging that ball. Did she grab it? Darn tootin' she did. With the camera? With the camera, safely nestled on her right side. Wow. Impressive. Protect the camera, young lady. That's job number one. Yeah. You know what I'm looking forward to in about eight minutes? Is? Blue Ridge Rifles. Yes, indeed. Sutton to Arthur. Schedule Sutton. Off the glass, no good. Ball's moving really well for North Georgia right now. Just no hesitation at all. Three from the left side will go and give that one to Morgan Towels. Blue Ridge Rifles are one of my like one one time a year favorite thing, you know. It's hard to comprehend the the accuracy that's required. The the uh, attention and respect that they command. Beautiful drive by Abby Franklin and immediate timeout with 7.24 to go. 73 to 54. North Georgia, this is the Nighthawk Sports Network. We actually do just about anything that you ask. We offer everything from design and branding all the way up to signs and banners, promotional products, digital signage, um, t-shirts, embroidery, Cups, koozies, pens, magnets. There's 25,000 items out there we can do. A lot of people don't know that we can handle all that and we can look at the customer and say, yeah, we do that. At Farmers, we've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything, even a red hot mascot. Hey, you're on fire! You bet I am. That's one way to fire up the crowd, but we covered it. Talk to farmers. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. It is a 19-point advantage for North Georgia. They have held the advantage for every second of this ball game, and it started within the first five seconds of the game on that first basket by Vanessa Agusa. Yeah, off the tip jump ball, yep. two passes and an and one. Hurricanes with possession. Travel. I thought it was actually called an illegal screen on 45. Wow. Maria's not too sure about that. I didn't see it either. I just saw the travel. So either way, it should be our ball. Yep. And it is. Thorpe to Sutton. Hook shot in the lane. Good. That's too easy. That's got to that's gotta anger. The Georgia Southwestern coaching staff. That, that's just too easy when the one of the best post players in the league catches and turns with a soft baby hook. Perry for three, and it was an easy shot for Julianne at the other end. 
Franklin controlling now for North Georgia. 75-54 with 6.44 to go. Faith Arthur, right block, and a foul. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm picking up that Faith Arthur likes that little wraparound delivery of the pass. This is not good for a color analyst <laughs> to, uh, to admit. But uh, off the top of my head, I think this is a compliment to her, is I don't know if she's right or left-handed. She uses both hands so I agree, well. equally well. Do you know the answer to that? I don't. Now, my assumption has been that she's right-handed but has just tremendous left-handed ability. There she's tied up by two. No turnover, though. And there are a lot of people who wouldn't know if Faith Arthur was right-handed or left-handed by the way she plays the game, so I think you're in good company. Yeah, but it's kind of my job to know. <laughs> the inbound. <laughs> I can tell you this, before her career's out, I'm going to know because she's going to score a lot of points from that dominant hand. Rumor has it. Okay, there's the left-handed shot. Rumor has it she's left-handed. That was going to be my guess. Yep. And but after that shot, I mean, that looked like that could have gone either way, and that's a trial. Yeah, you're going to give it right back to North Georgia. You know, when you play well enough that you appear to be ambidextrous, you're a really good athlete. And really hard to guard. <laughs> Extremely. <laughs> 75 to 57. Mirror image on the board, 5.55 to go, and a steal. Oh. Picked the pocket, did Morgan Towles. That's unusual. And lays it in. Very unusual. And I bet that's the last time that happens for a while. You bet. Abby will put that in her mental notebook. Darn tootin. In the corner, Thorpe drives to the paint. Schedule open for three right side. Good. Good pass by Tamara Thorpe. Getting a hunting, head hunting the paint there. Put two feet in the paint. Kicked out for a rhythm catch and shoot three. 5.20 to go in the ball game, 78 to 59. Down the lane goes Great defense. Tyra Smith, nothing doing. Sutton outlet to Franklin. Abby brings it up. Ahead to Thorpe. Ahead to Arthur. Right handed. And just as if she were a right handed player. I don't know. Timeout. Let's take it. 4.57 to go. Nighthawks 80, Hurricanes 59. This is the Nighthawks Sports Network. I'm a commuter. I'm an actor. I'm an intern. I'm a researcher. I am a senior. I'm an athlete. I'm a veteran. I'm a sister. I'm a sophomore. I'm a singer. I am an educator. I am a scientist. I am a resident. I am a writer. I am a leader. I am a cadet. I am a volunteer. I am a musician. I am a tutor. We are UNG. Triple header they've got. They won their first one. Knocked off Montevallo two to one. Wow. Two to one. Two to one. Wins Pitcher's or wins. Goal. Yep. Hurricanes have it as play has resumed. We're inside five minutes to go here in the ball game. 80 to 59 North Georgia. In the lane, the five footer will not go for Kiara York. Nighthawks have numbers. Arthur to Franklin. Livia Skinner for three. No good. Mm, that yeah. looked really good coming off of her hand. Yep. Good shooters have a wide hand. It, it just makes the ball rotate and makes it softer. I mean, it looked, I mean, her hand was just, I mean, she's a good shooter. Yep. I don't know what she shoots. I know she, but I hope she shoots a lot more of them as a Nighthawk. 
percentage from the floor, 54%. So not only is she a good, is she a good shooter, but she's a smart shot taker. Fifth Unbelievable year. Unbelievable steal and conversion by Abby Franklin. You know what that was? I remember you picking my pocket about three possessions ago. Guess and what's now coming? We're even. <laughs> <laughs> now oh, we're I love even. it. Oh my goodness. Are you saying that there was a bit of glee yeah. in her heart as she made that, uh, I don't know how she stayed in bounds. I starters. had actually stood up to uh, catch anybody that might have chosen to dive across the table. Right. Now, heaven forbid that that would have been necessary. No, nah, she's too quick yeah. to even get out of bounds. <laughs> At the line, Kiara York. That one is well short, but right to Chapman, who gets the roll. Boy, that was a friendly bounce. That'll make a coach mad there. 82-63. Down low, Arthur. No good. A foul inside on the Nighthawks. I don't think that pass was intended for Faith. Might not have been. I think it was for a cutting guard here on the back side. Georgia Southwestern is employing the roll it up to delay the clock starting. Down 19 with 3.40 to go. Must have a couple nice uh, Five sets points. drawn up in their uh, playbook. <laughs> Give the three there to Samuel. A few more of those. 82-66, 3.27 to go. Groover, bounce pass to schedule to Arthur, and Faith could not handle it. Oh, it's 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Nighthawk Sports Network. Hurricanes have it from the left elbow. The basket will go for Kiara York, freshman from Marietta, Hillgrove High School. 82-68. Clock rolls inside. Three minutes to go. Groover baseline. And I'm not sure who that was intended for. It's going to result in an easy layup at the other end for Morgan Towels. We'll keep it right here. It's a 30 second timeout. Winning pitcher for the Nighthawks in that victory over Montevallo. Seven innings, three hits, one unearned run. Uh, Kylie Smith. For Kylie Smith. Yeah. And he gave me the stat line that uh, told me what I needed to know. Tell you, there's a lot of, only one walk in the two games that she's pitched this season. But eight walks in, in innings that she hasn't pitched. They'll get that fixed. Indeed. Southwestern got oh. this thing down to 12. They have 82 to 70. Maybe they should keep doing their roll it up the floor strategy. Rolls 235 to go. Skinner to Sutton to Groover. Kara drives all the way in, is hammered by Morgan Towles. Oh, she said a bad word. You said two bad words. Yeah, why? Well, I'm um, not sure what defense they were in there. I think that's what she's so frustrated about is that yeah. they were kind of weren't on the same page defensively, and that's uh, not, that's ironic out of a timeout. Gruber pops that one through. She's talking about softball, and with Kara Gruber at the foul line, a two-sport athlete. Yeah, she... Uh, Mighty talented. Last year was able to uh, be on two, four, part of four conference championships. Right. Regular season tournament for both sports. Unbelievable. It's a lot of rings. That's a nice collection. Long jumper, no good. Rebound by the aforementioned Kara Groover. Kara leaves it for Thorpe. Into the hands of Wani Arnold and over to Olivia Skinner, down low, Sutton, and a foul over the top by the Hurricanes, number 22, Kiara York. So 
after today, the Hawks will have two on the road at Columbus State and USC Aiken and then Great pass by Kara Gruber over the top. Remember earlier we were talking about that post-entry pass, so you can't look at it? She didn't look at it, and she put it on a rope. Ends up being a layup. Boom. And the basket at the other end, 86-72. Minute 35 to go. Arnold. Right wow. side, nice drive. Goodness. You know, we talk about Abby being fast. That was a pretty quick move by Imani. Maybe she's taking a page out of Abby's book about being able to play at different speeds. That's, uh, that's just, and you got those cr kind of crazy players that just know only how to play with their hair on fire. Right. And they have a role, but it's the really impactful ones that can affect the game in fourth gear and go into a necessary gear to really take over. And not to say that neither of those players have taken over the game, but uh, they can, it affords them the ability to make plays. Right. By the way, that was the fifth foul on Tyra Smith. She has checked out the sophomore from Powder Springs. And back in the ball game, Lex Chapman. Monty completes the three-point play. Nicely done. Here we go. Going to save three seconds. Here you go. Just beyond the foul line, the shot goes for Morgan Towles, and it's 89 to 75. Nice soft shot there. Yep. Groover across half court. Skinner on the right wing, one dribbling away to Arnold in the corner. Lobs it back to Groover. Shot clock at 12. Down low to Arthur. Now Sutton using all that clock. Open. Skinner goes baseline. Ten footer up. No good. Rebound Kara Groover. <laughs> that's, that's, just, that's what I just can't put two and two together. Ah. If, you, if you want to stall start the clock, then defensively you should probably be fouling. Right. Otherwise, you're just letting us get those seconds back without attacking the rim. Uh, um, and look at this. You see who's now up here now to say, I've had enough of that. Yep. Oh, come on. 38 seconds to go. 89-75. Three. And that ball out of bounds. Shot clock is off. 89-75. Nighthawks will have captured their 15th win of the season. Groover is just going to dribble out the clock. And this will do it. 89-75, your final score. And the Nighthawks now 10-3 in the Peach Bell Conference. No, I, I knew it would happen. I, I, would, I never would have. i uh, just telling you, after Wednesday, I just knew that was going to happen. On behalf of Lee Glenn, Coach Burson, and the Nighthawks, this is Craig Corbin saying your final score, North Georgia over Georgia Southwestern, 89-75. So long.